All right, guys, it is August 28, 2018. God, aren't you guys tired of the bullshit? Aren't you tired of the lies? Aren't you tired of science putting out these studies that are crap? We now live in the age of crap. Everything's just crap, meaninglessness due to lie after lie after lie after lie. And what really bothers me is that we have an awful lot of people, it does not matter if they have been highly educated, college, masters, PhDs, or didn't go to college, just have a high school diploma, does not matter. People are stupid, they don't know how to think, they can't critically analyze what they read in these mainstream media publication scientists discover a genetic link between cannabis use and schizophrenia you smoke pot oh I have to be scared of you there's a link between you smoking pot and schizophrenia okay yeah now I've done a lot of research I know there is no gene that has been found no schizophrenic gene has been found and if you do the research you will come across well I'm not sure about that today actually so let me interject what was sent to me by a subscriber who I want to thank a snapshot of YouTube's new search algorithm I've said in previous videos that my recent searches of topics that I searched years ago, what I'm finding is what I was so easy to find years ago, I can't find anymore. You know, on YouTube, I recently put in the search bar global warming hoax documentaries. I could not believe that virtually the first page of what YouTube gave me was mainstream media doing the global warming is real. Years ago, when I put that search in, I came across so many videos pertaining to my key words, hoax, not anymore. In fact, I could not find any of the documentaries that I was looking for at all. So, this was just recently posted, this article. A snapshot of YouTube's new search algorithm? Yes. If you search the exact title, of Ann Coulter's recent appearance on C-SPAN, you have to scroll through 22 unrelated results from establishment news organizations before you can find it. So here is a snapshot of the YouTube search bar. You put in the exact title of a video, it should be number one. I'm finding as well that when I put exact titles of videos, they're not coming up as number one. So if you want to get this video, you need to just continue to scroll on down, scroll on down, scroll on down, get all of these mainstream media uh, YouTube videos. And my experience is that I would get mainstream media videos that are speaking a narrative opposite to what my key words were. They're ditching the truth and rewriting their own lying narratives. Google, YouTube, a whole lot of search engines, they're doing the same thing. So, 
when I came across this article, and I know that there is no gene for schizophrenia, I couldn't find the articles. That I, I, I so quickly was able to access only years ago. Scientists discover a genetic link between cannabis use and schizophrenia. Large-scale genetic study is the biggest of its kind ever to look at the potential side effects of cannabis use. So right there, what are you reading? What does it suggest to you? It suggests that a side effect of, or, or a potential side effect of cannabis use is schizophrenia. Wow. Now, as you're reading this article, and you're reading it and you realize, oh my God, we are surrounded by people who do not think, can't critically analyze what they are reading, and what they are reading, the obviousness of the crap article on a crap uh, scientific study, it hits you right in the face, but people don't don't critically analyze anymore. They just read words and they think, oh my God, cannabis use, oh my God, my, my son smokes pot and he's going to develop schizophrenia from that pot. Oh God. You know, in part, these kinds of articles, it, you know, <sighs> all of this is just to make people afraid of everything and everyone. You smoke pot? That means that you could be schizophrenic. Or you're self-medicating your schizophrenia. I, I, years ago, on Kafka Winston World, I posted a video on how they were making healthy eating a psychiatric disorder. Mainstream media posted that article. Healthy eating is a sign of mental illness. Okay, um, you just read a couple of sentences in this article and you're like, what, what, wait. Okay, a new scientific study has linked smoking cannabis with certain psychiatric conditions such as schizophrenia. Oh, so it's not just schizophrenia? What other psychiatric conditions then? Why are you just focusing on schizophrenia? Um, but the linking of cannabis with schizophrenia. That suggests if you smoke cannabis, then you are at a higher risk of becoming schizophrenic. So they are suggesting that that's a side effect of smoking pot. They uncovered that people with schizophrenia are also more likely to use cannabis. Okay, well that then is a whole other subject. People with schizophrenia are more likely to smoke pot. Well, that might be true. What does that suggest? Nothing. It suggests that they may feel better when they smoke pot. Um, this whole study is, it's just crap. Biggest correlation that stood out was the genetic overlap between cannabis use and the risk of schizophrenia, which means that they now have a gene for cannabis use. They have located genes for cannabis use and schizophrenia. Now I know that they have not found a gene for schizophrenia. And if you do the research and it's hard to do today, you will come across those in the field of psychology, psychiatry, those with some integrity who state a gene has never been found for schizophrenia. Do you think they have located a gene for cannabis use? No. So if you know that they have not located a gene for schizophrenia, you can pretty much bet they didn't locate any gene for cannabis use. But now they're saying there's a genetic overlap 
Okay, our study showed that people with a vulnerability to develop schizophrenia are at increased risk of using cannabis. Oh, okay. Well, now, that's different from what you headlined here, suggesting the potential side effects of, side effects of cannabis use. Well, the, the potential side effects, schizophrenia. So using or smoking pot can lead to schizophrenia. But now what you're saying is the study showed that people with a vulnerability to develop schizophrenia are at increased risk of using cannabis. How do you know who's vulnerable? Well, I will tell you. A child imprisoned in their family unit who is being traumatized a lot, they're vulnerable to mental illness or uh, vulnerable, they're at risk of developing a whole lot of mental illness, psychiatric disorders, um, schizophrenia. That's what you will also find from those who have integrity, who believe that the truth is important in the field of psychology and psychiatry, they will come out and say, number one risk factor of mental illness is childhood trauma. Why do we never ever talk about that and we just label people as mentally ill? Well, parents then get off the hook for the abuse and neglect that they, uh, how they parented their children and big pharma. It's got to be biological. It's got to be chemical imbalance, which another theory that was discredited 35 years ago. But hey, hey, we've got a population now that can't think, so we can just throw out anything and they'll accept it. No matter how much evidence all of those other people you know, find and want to present to them, and it doesn't matter anymore because people stopped thinking, the majority. There is no chemical imbalance. The drug that Big Pharma has manufactured and your psychiatrist or medical doctor give you, that causes the chemical imbalance. And a whole lot of side effects that mimic those behaviors that are considered to be behaviors, signs of mental illness. So there's two things operating here in this article. Cannabis use leads to schizophrenia. Schizophrenics are more likely to smoke pot, to, to use cannabis. Um, so what, what, are, what is this study about? It's about trying to make everybody mentally ill and also working to get everybody scared of one another. Researchers, they use this analysis technique called the Mendelian randomization to show a causal relationship, a causal relationship between schizophrenia and an increased risk of cannabis use. Okay. That's different from that last sentence. This sentence says people who are vulnerable to, use, uh, to develop schizophrenia are at an increased risk of using cannabis. The next sentence says there's a causal relationship between schizophrenia and an increased risk of cannabis use. All of this should really stand out in people's minds. And I hope that you're getting clearly what the problem is here. They know that they can write this crap because people just don't think. And I'm really unbelievably tired of it. People with schizophrenia use cannabis use as a form of self-medication. However, the researchers cannot exclude a reverse cause and effect relationship, meaning that cannabis use could contribute to the risk of schizophrenia. If there is a cause and effect relationship, you don't use language like could. It could contribute to the risk of schizophrenia.
If they have a causal relationship, then they say cannabis use leave, uh, will will you'll develop. It's more definitive. Not a could, not a possible, not maybe. <sighs> Genetic variants impacting cannabis use. Genetic variants impacting cannabis use? partially impact other psychological or psychiatric features as well. Well, I will say cannabis use definitely does impact psychological features. Makes you mellow. <laughs> you sit on the couch. Um, you laugh. You, you chill out. Oh my god. I don't even know how guys at this point. You know, I, I Every article that I come across now, mainstream media, it's like I don't even know what to say anymore. I will link below to these articles. The search for schizophrenic genes, schizophrenia genes. Larger and larger samples are showing smaller and smaller effect sizes. What does this mean for drug development, clinical practice, and our view of mental illness? Researchers reported in Nature that people with schizophrenia were more likely to have the overactive form forms of a gene called complement component 4, or C4, which is involved in pruning synapses during adolescence. Really? Okay. Suggesting that a biologic mechanism for a small subset of these diagnosed with schizophrenia, of those diagnosed with schizophrenia, is not the same as confirming the genetic theory of schizophrenia. Hey, but this came out of Harvard Medical School, and then it was published in Nature, and people don't know that these journals are bought and sold. People don't know. They haven't seen even the mainstream media telling us Hmm, big pharma lobbyists writing, writing these studies and paying scientists to put their name as the author of the study. People don't know that the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, that prestigious journal, the editor stepped down and came out and said that journals are bought and sold. Big Pharma now has control of, over them. They don't know this. Genes for schizophrenia and depression have been discovered before. And in those cases, the subsequent enthusiastic headlines were shortly followed by retractions and more sober thinking. Same thing with chemical imbalance. My God. I'm going to tell you, those of us, well, I'll speak for myself. The truth is above everything for me. It's above me. And I get, I get that the correlation between <laughs> lies and your society turning into a insane, meaningless society. Like, it renders life meaningless. And for those of us, and I'll speak for myself, who regard truth as sacrosanct, this is a very, very difficult era to live because you are hit with so many lies all the time, 24-7. And it is, and this, what re this is what really gets me, it is so easy to just continue to accept the lies rather than face truth.
Here's another article. There are no schizophrenia genes. Here's why genetic theories of schizophrenia were popular in the early part of the 20th century. They were built on 19th century concepts of eugenics that assumed a tainted gene pool that underpinned insanity, idiocy, prostitution, alcoholism, epilepsy, and other forms of physical or psychological deviance. Get rid of these people. I'm going to play a seven minute video right now. Very important. Please circulate this information. Thank you. I think people have the wrong idea about what mental illness is. And I think because of that, they've decided that it's hopeless. And because of that, doctors don't need to work anymore. Nobody needs to do anything. Nobody needs to take it up and look at it and see. You know what gets me? They, they will focus all kinds of stuff on the sick. I grant, I grant you, yes. Why do people get well? If a person can grow through the psychosis, can understand through the dynamic work what had led to the breakdown and what was contributing to the new cohesion, they have then a pride in personhood and a sense of being a centered self who can then move forward and tackle different challenges. If a person feels held together with the scotch tape of medication, that person is going to be scared to go out in the rain for fear that the medication is going to wash, the, the rain is going to wash the scotch tape off and they'll be back in a hospital. What effect do you think antipsychotic medication has on, this, on psychotherapy of people with schizophrenia? It makes it a little easier to talk to them to begin with because they are under control. They're not as bizarre. On the other hand, it is like the patient who takes a drink before they go to their therapy hour. They talk freely, but they don't change. And the reason for that is the medication is effective by diminishing affect. Affect, uh -huh. for the, in the vernacular being there. there yeah, and they, uh, the that's, you see, they're not as terrified because they can't feel. Do you believe that someone can be on, let's say have schizophrenia, be on an antipsychotic and be cured while they're on an antipsychotic? No, the symptoms are just uh, suppressed. It, they're symptom suppressants. That, the antipsychotics don't affect anything of the core. What do you think she would say to all this? medication of everybody nowadays, everybody who has schizophrenia getting put on medication right away. Her favorite, this is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> now the, the big pharma people will say you have to stay on these meds the rest of your life or you'll suffer terrible de deterioration. Um, that this does not have scientific foundation. I wrote about science for a long time. And I, I guess in my personal life, you know, I mean, I'm not a religious fellow. I believe in science. I think it's a force for good. It's a force for, you know, s uh, about knowing about the world. So I, I think, I mean, I, I believe in science. I believe in the principles of science. I honor science. I love science. So uh, that's one of the things that was so disappointing, to see the bad science and to see science dishonored. And all I do is I say, Look at your own research. Yes. Look at your own NIM research. It's not even mine. It's not the critics. I say, look at your own research. Read it. What does it say? <laughs> the uh, attempt to discredit treatment for schizophrenia is really uh, in order to establish um, uh, you know, a uh, concept that the only treatment for schizophrenia is drugs. And furthermore, I don't even think that's the concept that's to be established. This concept that uh, people want to establish is it's a brain disease. It's also just easier to say, 
this is genetic, it's a chemical imbalance, and let's just treat it with drugs. And it's part, it, it reflects our culture in general, that we're, we're, we're moving towards quick fixes and easy ways out, you know, fast food is not just, it's, it's like a fast food culture, it's a fast uh, uh, cure culture. Why are your ideas so unheard and so unpopular in the modern world? First of all, my ideas are nothing new. I mean, these ideas that I have have been around for decades. Um, I think the, to be honest with you, I think the primary reason why they're not so popular is because nobody's getting rich off of this way of thinking. You know, the pharmaceutical industry makes billions of dollars, you know, marketing their product. You know, I get my hourly fee, and anybody that does this work, that's what we get is an hourly fee. There's no profit margin per se. Psychiatry has actually engaged in an assault on personal meaning. And part of it is a medical model, the other is greed. It seems to me that above all people, the most disturbed people can't handle medication intrusions into their lives. It's like the reverse of what psychiatry says. I mean, sometimes I kid and they say, well, if you want to drug somebody, you know, drug some powerful attorney who's manipulating his family and brutalizing his wife and uh, maybe I'll slow him down and give everybody else a chance, you know, okay. But I don't really mean that, of course. But the last person that you want uh, to drug or to tell that they have a biological disorder is a 17-year-old girl who doesn't know if she's the Virgin Mary or if she's a prostitute or whether she's good or evil and whether her mother has a tail and her father has horns and who's terrified and frightened. That person needs such gentleness and patience and understanding and, and relationship. That human being really needs to be cared for in every thing that word means. And so what we do instead is to brutalize the most vulnerable people.